Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bold. Yellow Aki. Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry, I'm in a cramped space here. You're going to see an odd hand going out that way, and it's going to be a whole mess. But we're back at Iguana Land, day two. We're going to be meeting up with Ty today to talk about some of the reptiles you guys saw on Monday. If you didn't see Monday's video, we basically did a full tour of all the major reptiles at Iguana Land thus far. Obviously, it's not the full thing. You definitely want to come down here and check it out. There's turtle species and much, much more I didn't show off. But all the major ones, we, we pretty much got a glimpse of on Monday. So check that Monday video out that's in the top right if you haven't seen it. But we're going to be doing a deep dive today on some of these and have Ty explain a little bit about these reptiles. So let's get to it. A lot of this stuff I don't know. I don't know a lot about cyclora and iguanas and even the larger monitors. You guys know I have a, you know, I keep several species and that's pretty much my limit. So going to be really interesting stuff. Let's get to it. Day two of Guana Land. Okay, so we're in one of these exhibits we've uh, built recently. Uh, this is 14 foot by 8 by 8. Uh, this was done by Janison Studios. Dan and Brandon and Damien helped. Um, you could see the painting itself. We tried to make this uh, closer to one of the um, islands that, that this species found, which is the Dominican Republic. Uh, this is Cyclora Recordi. Of course, uh, iguana, one of the uh, nine species of cyclora. There are, of course, other subspecies, uh, but this is actually this is the only species, along with the rhino iguana, uh, cyclora cornuda, that actually found in the same uh, island. All the rest of the, um, the cyclora are found on their own distinct island. Uh, of course, iguana is common name. And they're one of the prettiest, and of course, uh, one of the most endangered species of iguana in the world. We're lucky to have them here. Uh, of course, we're going to be uh, producing these guys. This yeah. specimen here, especially, is really a pretty one. Yeah. You see a lot of blues. The part of blues on him is amazing. I have yet to see other uh, recordi with this kind of powder blue face and the spikes. But then I haven't seen too many of them. <laughs> there isn't too many of them around, you know? Yeah, I do see that. Yeah. Very nice. I like the, I don't know how to describe it, but the patterning. It's almost like a Dalmatian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, I love that pattern too. And they do keep that pattern. Very impressive lizards. I love this species. This was a gift, along with the female, was a gift to me by a good friend of mine, John Even. The female's back there. Yeah, female's yeah. back there. Really cool, and again, this enclosure is just yeah, so special see, looking. Yeah, you could see also very functional. We have a uh, well, well water dripping into a custom, yeah. So you always have flowing water. I hate the uh, standing water, uh, you need to be chained constantly and sanitized and stuff. And basically, that way, we always have flowing water and we could just empty it out once a week. And we're not worried about it. Yeah. So uh, this is Parenti, is the largest monitor from Australia. Uh, I believe they get to maybe seven feet. That I don't know, but at least six. It is the largest, obviously. Uh, and in U.S. collection, Parenti is more rare than the Komodo dragon. I don't know, I think there's only about four or five uh, zoos that actually have Parenti. Um, we are really um, blessed to be have two of these at the Iguana Land and they were uh, gifted or donated to us from uh, Dallas Zoo. I have one inside, I have one uh, outside here. Um, this one is named Geo for geometric pattern oh i <laughs> yeah. like that yeah so that's my favorite thing about them just especially yeah. the neck and the head the bird like neck yeah, yeah incredible it's, 
you just don't see, I don't, I can't think of anything that's like that. You know what exactly, I mean? Exactly. Exactly. It's crazy to me. And I didn't yeah. actually realize how big these guys got. I know that they got big, but I didn't realize it was, what, you seven, eight feet, you said? Yeah. They're long. Yeah. Um, they're not hefty like the uh, water monitor. Yeah. Or even lace monitors are hefty, heftier than this, these guys. Do you have any knowledge as to why there was never a population that was brought over when kind of able? Um, like other a, Australian yeah, species? I believe the, um, uh, ex, the, um, export, um, what should I say, uh, the ban, Australia, oh, yeah. I believe it happens in the 70s, or, so, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been that, a while. Yeah, so, um, I don't think there was any, uh, no man, I take the back, I think Frank has some, uh, uh back then, Frank Reedus. Um, mm -hmm. And I know some uh, people who had them back then uh, when they were legal to bring them in. Okay. But uh, I believe there were some that were had, but I don't think any of them really survived long term. Oh, uh, right? okay. So, um, so they're... that I do not know actually because I wasn't really into Varanid way back then. Yeah. But that's my feeling. Having said that, the uh, reptile garden in, uh, uh, where is it? Um, South Dakota, South Dakota, maybe uh, the largest reptiles in the world mm -hmm. and, and the U.S. anyway uh, has some, and I don't know what that population came from. Maybe it was that uh, you know the babies from some of those earlier ones. Okay. Um, all I know is that um, the Dallas Zoo one came from Australia directly. Now, I guess just one more question, mm -hmm. just in terms of because I don't know too much about you know obviously Australia getting things out of there is not right. possible. Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, is that why in the U.S. they, a lot of those species are banned? Or, like, do you know anything, just kind of on my own curiosity about, like, let's say why, I don't know, Ackies aren't banned versus, well, like, you know, other Australian species? Okay, so, uh, these guys are not what I call banned, alright? Mm -hmm. So, all the Australian species in the U.S., technically, well, not technically. A lot of them were smuggled animals. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Um, it, that's just a fact. All right. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's not for me to judge. All right. Yeah. Uh, but the law has been there for a while. Um, and of course, we do everything legally here. Uh, so, um, but having said that, would I get in trouble if I had bitter dragon, for instance, or Aki, mm. right? Uh, the, and or carpet python or any of these species that's been here for a long time like Woma um, that people have been breeding for a long time and so that's a really fine line between is it illegal animal or is it legitimate um, that's a tough so one. So it's messy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so, messy. Yeah, it's very messy and okay. U.S. Fish and Wildlife knows that but if they see something like this they kind of know that this will be a smuggled animal whereas uh, even the lace monitor, there was some breeding going on in before and stuff. So they're not going to come after people with lace monitor or right. Aki or even bearded dragon. Okay, so this is Rhinoceros iguana. It's like Plura cornuta, come from Dominican Republic. This is one of my pets, Donkey Kong. She's about 35 years old. That, and it's my puppy. Is that big for a male or is that? Uh, actually, I'd say it's maybe uh, upper 70 percentile. I've seen male really? much bigger than this <laughs> even. <laughs> but he's one of the man. bigger ones yeah. at, the, at uh, the Iguana Land. Yeah, he's pretty big. He's uh, crazy. about 25 pounds. Yeah, so medium sized dog. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah wow. Um, and of course, they live a lot longer than dogs do, 60 years. Mm -hmm. right? So it's a long-term commitment. Uh, they do grow very slow. You get baby this size, and they're just they take them literally uh, 15 years before they can become really full size, uh -huh. right, size-wise. They could become adult at three or four and breed, but for them to attain big size like this, they need at least 15 years. And you've had him since he was born. I'm sorry. You've had him since he was born. No, actually, no. this one I got him. Uh, 
14 years ago. 14? And he was already about 20. Was he, uh, when you first got him, was he pretty calm already, or did you have to do it? Uh, no, he was not, he, he was not calm. He was very, very, um... Flighty? Not flighty, but he was nervous. Nervous, right? okay. Okay, he was a nervous animal. Um, he would not come to you, obviously. Um, uh, when you approach him, he move away. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like dash away, it was yeah. just kind of move away. So I'm sure. He's a calmer animal, you could tell. But it, I knew it would just need to be worked on with his trust. Yeah. And so started, the best thing to do is, um, a lot of times, let them get a little uh, older, maybe at three. Uh, but before that, you want to start giving, you know, showing yourself as a source of food. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of time you could start hand feeding. Let them go a little hungry. That's okay. They're not gonna tie up if they don't eat for even a week, right? Yeah. Like literally. No. Nope, like agree. if you think about it, if they have a hurricane in the island for a week, they might even not eat. Mm -hmm. Right? They might be under the ground or something. Right? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. People worry about things too much. Uh, yeah. These are tough animals. If they don't eat for even two, three days, it's not gonna hurt them. Right? Yeah. No, I agree. I, I say the same thing with. Ackies, I get people ask me questions from time to time on them, and because mm -hmm. they're very, they're very flighty in the beginning. Mm -hmm. As babies, they're very right, unsure. They are. They are. So, uh, yeah. you know, I'm just, I just say, stick with it if you want right. Right. Um, to, you know, have them tom train mm -hmm. come up mm -hmm. on your arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feed them every day, right. you know. Like right. you can right. wait them out a little bit. I do a lot of things that help me with taming. Was uh, I put them in a sink? Like for instance, deep sink where they can't climb out, mm -hmm. and put in about an inch or so of water, uh -huh. and then kind of put them in there and kind of play with them too, all right? And just give them a little bath so that it, it feels the the touch kind of thing. Uh huh. Right? That that kind of desensitizes them. Okay. I I do that every day um, with a baby, and then also you hold them gently, and you struggle, and just be firm with it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't squeeze, but firm with it, and let her settle down. Once you settle down. You could take a leaf of uh, romaine lettuce, for instance, which mm -hmm. is very nutritious. I don't know why people think that romaine <laughs> lettuce is bad for, you know, iguanas and stuff, which is yeah. BS. Uh, <laughs> I know so many people uh, that 50% of their diet is romaine lettuce, and they're the best tortoise breeders in uh -huh. the world. And iguana. So yep. the romaine iguana uh, lettuce itself is very nutritious uh, diet. Um, anyway, so, and they like it too. So I take a romaine lettuce or something like that they like. Uh, uh, gently put them in front of the uh, the mouth, and you know, and a lot of times they tongue, they, their tongue will come out and taste it. And once the tongue comes out and, um, and start tasting the um, the uh, the food that you gave them, half the battle. Yeah. yeah, I hear you there. Why? Right. Because when the tongue come out, they're more curious and frightened now. Yeah. All right, so this is Cyclora lewisii. Uh, this is a hybrid, high, high quality. You can see a lot of blues in him. Um, the Cyclora species, there are nine of them, uh, and then subspecies also. Uh, Cyclora lewisii itself is technically banned from a private person to have them. Mm -hmm. So we have these Cyclora lewisii hybrid and this one was most likely hybridized with like Cuban iguana or uh, the Sister Island iguana. Uh -huh. um, my goal is here to produce a uh, Lewisite hybrid that look like the real thing. So good thing about that is because of the law, the Lewisite itself cannot be sold. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't sell them, technically you could sell them within state but they cannot cross the line commercially, okay. right? State line. But having said that, also U.S. Fish and Wildlife went a step further, and they decided that all Lewisite high, Lewisite pure ones are illegal in private hands in the U.S. Oh, okay. Therefore, you're not even you're not supposed to have a purebred one, or they will take take it away from you. Uh -huh. All right, and give it to one of the Jews, for instance. All right. So, to have hybrid. The rule is that you could have hybrid and basically there's no law against having hybrid. Mm -hmm. So my job is for me to produce this hybrid and try to come out with a uh, animal that look as pure as possible. A blue, long nose, etc, etc. So uh, that way commercially I could sell them as pet or collectors 
um, and then I have to worry, don't have to worry about the lock. Okay. Now, were they hybridized for that purpose, or what, what's the kind of motivation behind that? I don't think so. I think they got hybridized only because they were so rare, and oh. I believe back then uh, the Cuban iguana and Lewisides were uh, subspecies. Okay. And since then, they became full species. Mm -hmm. All right. So I believe back when they were doing it, this species were Cyclora nubila lewisii, uh -huh. and the Cuban iguana, iguana was Cyclora nubila nubila. I believe. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, they said, "Well, yeah, uh, the, they, we only have few lewisii. Let's uh, breed it with the subspecies. That's I think we got the hybrid." So, I don't think it was for commercial purposes I okay. think back then. That was just the yeah. perk of it or right, whatever. Right. So. All right, well, this wraps up the Guana Land collab day two. I had so much fun here. Ty was such a great host, and I really appreciate him for letting me come down, check out what he's got going on, and he really taught me a bunch of things today in today's video. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know if you want to see more of these collabs, and stay tuned for a couple quick announcements. And we're back in the car for another Patreon shout out. Day two at a Guana Land. I want to shout out Chris Cuts, Darian J, Cat and Rick. David T, Angela L, Stephanie S, Ellen M, Toothy Chicken, Hex, Adam B, and Smooth Cat. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it so much. You guys too can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Check the top right for more information. Tier 3, get you on my forehead. And that's it for today's video. Let me know how you like the collab. This is the first big collab I really ever done and I would love to do more and do a tour really of more when I get some free time so if you guys really enjoyed this let me know in a comment and I will do more of these like comment subscribe as well check out the merch that's to the left of my head right of your screen teespring link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video bye guys